The last time we discussed China on this channel, it was to discuss a failed project, Forest City. This is a $100 billion city built by China, and no one really lives here. However, for today's video, we wanted to do something different. That's why we have compiled 10 of the most jaw-dropping projects all credited to China. Starting with number 10, the Bain Panjiang Bridge. It is the highest bridge in the world standing on top of two mountains. The distance between the bridge's deck and the river below is 1,800 feet, which is the highest for any bridge on this planet. Due to Bain Panjiang's incredible height, it can fit the Empire State Building underneath and still have some space to spare. The bridge connects the two provinces of Guizhou and Yunnan in southern China via a four-lane span. Previously, if someone wanted to travel between these two regions, it took them over four hours because of the dangerous terrain. Using the bridge, it now only takes an hour. Being a cable-stayed bridge, Bain Panjiang is supported by two H-shaped towers of unequal length. The taller one is the eastern tower, which stands on a higher mountain than the western one. For comparison, the highest bridge in the U.S. is the Royal Gorge Bridge. Much like Bain Panjiang, it's erected on two mountain peaks on top of a river. However, it's still short of 800 feet as compared to its Chinese counterpart. Driving on the Bain Panjiang is nothing short of an adventure. Being so high up, it's frequently surrounded by clouds and offers spectacular views to passersby. The bridge is a vital segment of the G56 Hangzhou Ruili Expressway, one of the biggest expressways in China. This project goes on to show how much China invests in transport and connectivity, partly because it has the second largest population in the world, and partly because the country has a diverse terrain. China is home to sandy deserts, dangerous mountains, high plateaus, and dense forests. It also features around 2,000 natural lakes. Naturally, these barriers must be overcome if China wants to enhance connectivity across the country. Our next project is built for this very purpose. It's the longest underwater highway tunnel in China, stretching up to 6.6 .6 miles. This is the Taihu Tunnel. It's built underneath Lake Taihu, which is a popular tourist destination. Lake Taihu is a kidney-shaped basin surrounded by land on all sides. China wanted to connect the cities surrounding the lake, but it also wanted to preserve the lake's natural beauty. That's why it opted for an underwater tunnel. The tunnel opened to the public in 2022 and offers six lanes in each direction. It will connect with the expressways of neighboring cities like Suzhou, Wuxi, and Changzhou, and reduce congestion in the process. The Taihu Tunnel is a small segment of the Changzhou-Wuxi Highway. Building a tunnel of this length under a sensitive zone was a challenge. The engineers wanted to minimize pollution seeping into the lake. That's why they first built a coffer dam in the middle of the water. This provided a dry site for workers and a separation from the lake's natural flow. In addition, the tunnel features three ventilation shafts, each of which is creatively designed to integrate with the environment. Because the tunnel is so long, drivers may get sleepy passing through it. The ceiling is fitted with hundreds of LED lights to stimulate the passengers. Those who use the tunnel have to stick to its 62 mile per hour speed limit. However, if you want to go faster than that, then we suggest you take China's high-speed railway. China has the longest and most extensively used railway network. According to the latest updates, the total length of China's high-speed network is 28,000 miles. If laid end-to-end, -end, it can encircle the Earth more than three times. A vital part of this network is the connection between Beijing and Guangzhou. Beijing is the capital of China, while Guangzhou is the capital of its province, Guangdong. That's why creating a high-speed link between these two made perfect sense. The only problem is that Beijing is located in the country's north, while Guangzhou is in the extreme south. People using the regular trains had to travel for a full day to reach either city. But that all changed with the introduction of the Beijing-Guangzhou high-speed rail. With a maximum speed of 220 miles per hour, the travel time is slashed to eight hours. It spans a length of 1,400 miles, making it the longest high-speed track in the world. Along its route, it passes through five provinces with 35 stops in between. This route even extends to Hong Kong through its connection to the XRL rail link. That's why it's the only railway in China that requires immigration and customs clearance for crossing into Hong Kong. At number seven, we have the Tiangong Space Station. This is a space station constructed and operated by China Man Space Agency. 
Since China is excluded from the International Space Program, Chinese nationals are not allowed on the International Space Station. Back in 2011, the U.S. Congress banned China due to its link with the People's Liberation Army, the military wing of the nation. As a result, China developed its own space program with some collaborations with Russia and Germany. The Tiangong Space Station orbits at a low altitude of 217 to 280 miles from the Earth's surface. This is a permanently crewed space station, which means that at any given time, there will be human presence there. The first crew to visit the space station consisted of three astronauts as part of the Shenzhou 12 mission. Crews are replaced every six months and the latest team set off to space on October 30th, 2024. While China is busy conquering space, there's a monster at home that's overtaking much of the country. This is the Gobi Desert. Every year, this desert expands by 1,400 square miles. The Gobi Desert is shared between southern Mongolia and China. Each year, the desert expands southward by converting fertile grasslands to barren soil. To stop this, the government introduced a green initiative that would take 70 years to complete. It's known as the Great Green Wall, a reference to one of the Chinese wonders of the world. The project aims to increase forest cover from 5% to 15% in the northern portion. This wall consists of strips of trees planted in vast swathes, effectively forming a green wall. These trees act as windbreaks to the dust storms that frequently blow across the area from the Gobi. By 2050, China aims to plant an additional 35 billion trees to reach its goal. It has already planted 66 billion trees as of lately. Some experts question the green wall's efficiency, but China isn't the only nation that adopted this strategy. There's a green wall in Africa too. It is located in the Sahara Desert and spans horizontally across 11 countries. Unlike the Gobi, the Sahara Desert is seven times bigger, so the threat of Africa is much bigger and urgent. In parallel with these environmental efforts, China is also making strides in sports, especially football. That's why on number five, we have the Guangzhou Football Park. This is going to be the largest football stadium in China with a seating capacity of 74,000. The project's initial design featured a blooming lotus on top and a much larger capacity. This would have made it the largest soccer stadium in the world. However, the project's developer, Evergrande, faced a liquidity crisis in 2021. The government seized the project and reduced its capacity to 74,000 spectators. We are still uncertain whether the Lotus design would be retained, but the project would still be a major player in the global football arena. If you like the video so far, kindly take a moment to subscribe to our channel. We bring the latest news in the construction industry with two fun videos each week. Number four, we have the largest dam in the world based in China. Now there is more than one parameter to rank a dam. For example, the Tarbella Dam in Pakistan handles the largest water volume, while the Atipu Dam in Brazil has the longest wall. But the dam we are discussing today has the largest generation power. We are talking about the iconic Three Gorges Dam. It has an installed capacity of 22,500 megawatts. The dam utilizes the hydro potential of the Yangtze River, the longest river in the country. Historically, China has exploited this river and created hundreds of dams along its length. Three Gorges is one of the many dams located downstream of the river. In addition to generating hydropower, this dam is designed to reduce flooding. The Yangtze River has flooded 50 times with the most recent occurring in April 2024. 71 people lost their lives along with an economic loss of $700 million. Without dams like the Three Gorges, the flooding would have been much worse. It's important to note that the Three Gorges alone can't solve the flooding problem. Much of the flooding is caused by heavy rainfall in the monsoon season, raising the water level by several feet. While the present scenario seems grim, the future could be much better. With the help of mega projects like the Great Green Wall and Three Gorges, China can lower the severity of its natural disasters and hopefully offer a safer future for its citizens. On the topic of safety, did you know that China has the third most powerful army in the world? Due to the country's alienation from NATO, it has to do what it can to defend itself. The South China Sea is a critical region for its defense bases. This region is heavily congested with islands and is bounded by seven countries. China claims approximately 90% of the South China Sea within the so-called Nine Dash Line. 
These claims are hotly contested by Taiwan, Vietnam, and Philippines, all claiming historical ownership of the region. Ignoring these objections, China has maintained its military presence. It has even developed seven artificial islands to serve as its military bases. These islands are equipped with the most sophisticated defense technology in the world. This includes fast attack boats, missile launchers, and radar systems. There's also a double runway capable of supporting military aircraft. One of the islands also hosts the KJ-500 aircraft that is used for identifying targets and advanced surveillance. Now, China isn't only using these islands for defense purposes. Another development in the South China Sea is being used for tourism. In the southern tip of the country, there's a tiny island called Hainan. China plans to develop this destination into a premium tourist spot. Hainan is well connected by air and sea with two major airports, Haiku Meilan Airport and Sanya Phoenix Airport. The island is also accessible via high-speed rail, allowing for easy travel between its northern and southern cities. Utilizing its potential, China has built 380 hotels, 30 golf courses, and 60 beach locations on the Hainan Island. Being a special economic zone, the place features duty-free products ranging from high-end fashion, accessories, gourmet foods, and cosmetics. The plan is to make Hainan Island a center for luxury tourism and natural beauty. At number one, we have the biggest undertaking by China to date. In 2013, the country launched the Belt and Road Initiative to connect Asia, Europe, and Africa. The project borrows its idea from the ancient Silk Road that linked China with the West. This project has 146 member countries, an indication of its growing global influence. Under this project, Various infrastructures like highways, railways, ports, and airports are being constructed to enhance international connectivity. Notable examples include the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, which involves significant investments in transportation and energy projects, totaling over $60 billion. Estimates show that the total cost of BRI can climb up to $8 trillion upon completion. Even though it may seem like a lot of money, this project allows China to expand its influence globally and have shorter and more reliable routes for trade. While China seems to progress at a fast pace, the rest of the world is also catching up. We have created an exclusive video on the biggest projects in the world, so if you're interested, you can watch it here. Anyway, thanks for watching and we will catch up in the next video.